So we saw that in Turkish we have a spoken question mark for when we don't use a question word. And that we also use it when we make one word questions that we do often in conversation now for confirmation. When we say for example tomorrow, yarum, I want to go tomorrow. Tomorrow, yarum. And we also saw the use of this spoken question mark in the past tense. Geldin mi? Did you come? When we use the spoken question mark with the present to be endings, im, sin, is, etc., it behaves slightly differently. The endings stick to it. They stick to the question particle rather than to the verb. So, geldin mi? Did you come? Geliyor musun? Are you coming? Musun written as a separate word, but all harmonizing with the O of Gelior, Gelior Musun. In the future, we are also using these present to be endings now. How is you will come? Geleceksin. Geleceksin. So here actually we're using the to be ending, the present to be ending now. We just have our will and then we hook on our sin. So also here with the spoken question mark, the to be ending is going to hook on to the question mark no longer to the verb. So if we want to ask, will you come? How is it going to sound? Good, but we need to harmonize a little better. Very good. Won't you come? Aren't you going to come? How would that be? So first give me, you won't come, without the question. You won't come. You will not come. Gelmeyeceksin. Gelmeyeceksin. We keep both feeds and we divide them with the Y, no? Gelmeyeceksin. Gelmeyeceksin. Now make it a question. Won't you come? Gelmeyeceksin. Gelmeyeceksin. Very good. Won't you come? Gelmeyeceksin. Good. What was to arrive? can think of to give, if it helps. Varmak. Varmak. Good. What was tomorrow? Yarn. Yarn. Good. How would you say, we will arrive tomorrow? Yarn. Varajais. Yarn. Varajais. Will we arrive tomorrow? Will we arrive tomorrow? Yarn. Varajak. Now we have a difficulty, no? How do you think we might deal with it? With a Y? Good. <laughs> Very good. Will we arrive tomorrow? Yaren Varajak Muse. Very good. Very good. So you've really learned to deal with the difficulties yourself. Now as long as you relax and you think of the tools at your disposal and have a go and see what happens. Brilliant. Won't we arrive tomorrow? Yaren Barmayachak. Very good. Yaren varmayacak muyuz. To start or to begin was başlamak. 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 How would you say it will start now? Şimdi başlıyor. That means it's starting now. Şimdi başlıyor. But it will start now. Başlayacak. Başlayacak. Şimdi başlayacak. Şimdi başlayacak. Will it start now? Şimdi başlayacak mı? Good. Şimdi başlayacak mı? We could also question the now. Will it start now? Şimdi mi başlayacak? What is to come again? Gelmek. Gelmek. You're coming? Geliyorsun. Geliyorsun. Are you coming? Geliyor musun? Geliyor musun? Good. So this is the to be ending in the present and it hooks on to the spoken question mark. Geliyor musun? Very good. And with this we finish our introduction much more than an introduction to Turkish. Well done. We've learned a lot of Turkish. Oh my God, yes. I would like to finish up by giving you some advice for practicing Turkish. The key concepts to practice Turkish or any language are exposure, analysis and use. That means you want to expose yourself to the language. This might be sitting around with Turkish speaking friends and listening, watching movies or music in Turkish and analyzing that Turkish. 
it's not something that you want to have on in the background and expect to slowly sleep into your mind. No, you want to use that Turkish that you're listening to or seeing, reading, because reading is also exposure. You want to use that language to learn and to remember what you have already had exposure to. So that means all of the forms, for example, that we've learned during the course, see if you can identify them either by ear or by reading. You might read something in Turkish and get the general gist of what it's about or not. Whether you do or whether you don't, you will surely be able to identify many forms that we've learned here. Every time you do and you think about them, you bring them closer to the surface, let's say. Easier to use and easier to recognize. With just a little bit of that, you can notice a huge difference in your fluency in Turkish. Insisting with that and in no time you're very conversational in Turkish. And then we must use the language. We learn a language to use it. A great way to use your new language is to mix it with English. Of course, there are many gaps in your Turkish at the moment. If you find a Turkish speaker that wishes to practice their English, you can mix. You can speak mainly in English for now, but when you say something in English and you realize that that structure you know in Turkish and you can say it in Turkish, then you try to make the sentence in Turkish and in this way practice. This also gives you the opportunity not to be overwhelmed by all that you don't know, but to prioritize what you feel like you need to assimilate first. So if you need a word to communicate something, but you don't feel like you really need that word yet in your Turkish learning journey, then you can just use the English word. When you come across a word that you feel like you've needed other times, a common word, and you feel like, okay, oh no, that verb is an important one, you can ask for it. If you prioritize in this way, you are much more likely to assimilate and absorb the new material you expose yourself to. For one part, because you are not overwhelming yourself with too much new material, and for the other part, because your mind recognizes that this is important material that you really want. As you continue, you will find yourself replacing more and more of the English with Turkish in a rewarding, almost effortless, fun way. And this is how you keep and internalize what you learn. There are many groups you can find online to make language interchange or to meet in person. I also want to speak a little bit about how to use native speakers. Now, we assume native speakers have an idea about what's going on in their language, and it tends to be the complete opposite. Native speakers really need a lot of help to understand, firstly, what you're asking when you ask something, and to understand the mechanisms behind their language. Let me give you an example. I might come to a native English speaker and say, can you say he be? And this native English speaker, 99% of the time, is going to look at me and say, no, never. I will go away thinking that I misunderstood something or I didn't hear he be or whatever it is. The reason for this is that that native English speaker is going to imagine a context or be missing the context for he be to make sense and going to think that he be is a mistake and what you meant was he is. Once your native English speaker has sworn that he be is totally impossible, you can then give them the example of it's imperative that he be here early tomorrow. And then your native English speaker will be like, oh, Oh yeah, you can, that's okay. <laughs> so when you ask if something's okay to a native speaker, you should always give the context, no? What you mean, and then ask if it's okay. You might also want to be forming your own rules rather than asking the native speaker to explain grammar to you. I think this is much more productive for a language learner. So you can use your native speakers as soundboards, let's say, just to say, is this right? You give them the context and you ask, is this right? Or is this better? Would it be said like this or like that? And you give the context and you see, just to get their gut feeling about what would be correct. And then you can make your own rules about why. And the other thing is ask more than one native speaker. We all have dialects and more so idiolects, our own personal dialects you will be very surprised to see how much native speakers disagree. The point here then is that you need to trust in yourself, your own investigation and your own curiosity and use native speakers as a resource rather than an authority. You should be the authority about what you understand about the language and at the same time forever open to changing or tuning your views during your journey of amplifying the structures we've learned fine-tuning them and filling them in with more content. 
With Intro to Turkish, we enter a very exciting new phase of the language transfer project in which I'm making courses in languages I don't speak or I'm not actively practicing. This is made possible thanks to the native speaker collaborations who answer my endless questions and also proof the audios for any mistakes or to make suggestions. These native speakers are users of other language transfer courses and this way language transfer becomes something like a spontaneous and fluid organization that gets the job done through people's desire to collaborate, to give and to share. I'm limited by how much time I can spend on the project by finances and for this reason I recently created the crowdfunding campaign at patreon.com where you can pledge anything from $1 a month and become a patron of the project and that $1 a month will allow me to create new language courses whilst you, the users, can vote for the next language course I create. So, if you would like to follow up Introduction to Turkish with Complete Turkish, you can vote for that. Please check out that campaign at Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com forward slash language transfer. I would love to work on language transfer full time and create many more courses in languages chosen by you, the users, but for this I do need your collaboration. You can make a one-off donation through the website languagetransfer.org where you can also vote for the next courses to be created with the thinking method or a monthly contribution through the Patreon campaign where you can cast your votes each and every month for the next language to be made easy and enlightening with the thinking method. As I mentioned, you can also vote for the follow-up of Intro to Turkish, Complete Turkish, which would be an immense pleasure for me to create. It's been wonderful to share this with you all. Please help me come back soon with some more material and meanwhile, please share and enjoy your Turkish.